Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is the former President of the United Nations Human Rights Council and has served as Germany's ambassador and permanent representative to the United Nations in Geneva. Please do join me in giving a resoundingly warm welcome to Ambassador Ruka. Madam President, dear guests, uh, distinguished participants at this conference, dear refugees in Ashraf III in Albania, I know that you are listening and watching and uh, have uh, actually come close uh, to, to your fate and sympathize very much with you. I, like last year, I would like to state at the beginning of this conference that has lasted for some time that I do not know whether I agree with everything that has been said or done at this conference, because I wasn't here. However, I fully support the struggle for a free, democratic, and secular Iran. And that's what, what we're all here for, isn't it? I also wholeheartedly support the struggle for justice for the victims of the 1998, 1988 massacres and your struggle against the regime's ongoing and scandalous violations of human rights and its connected crimes, including, as the Swedish courts have recently confirmed, in the case of Hamid Nouri, crimes against international law. I believe that also the hideous Hamas attack on Israel on 7th of October last year was an eye-opener for many. As to the true character of the regime and its IRGC, which is denying Israel's right to exist, shamefully, and is financing Middle East terrorism through all its proxies. Therefore, I believe it is high time for the EU to list the IRGC as a terrorist organization. <laughs> Apart from that, let me also, in my capacity as former president of the UNHRC, stress that I am satisfied in general with how the UN is responding to the challenge of naming and shaming what is actually happening inside Iran. I think we have seen reasonable resolutions of the General Assembly. Uh, but in particular, of course, I think we can be very proud of the work of the UN Special Rapporteur on, on Iran. Um, and um, it has already been, been mentioned that Professor Yavid Rehman uh, now published or talked about a new re landmark report in which he, um, according to reports, concluded that the 1988 massacre of thousands of political prisoners in Iran amounted to crimes against humanity, and it is reported that he also mentioned genocide. Let us see this report. I think this report needs to be out there for the public to see what the Special Rapporteur has found, and we are very grateful to him. And it shows that the human rights special procedures are actually functioning. Uh, the, he, Professor Riemann um, presented these findings at an event hosted by the Organization Justice for the Victims of the 1988 Massacres in Iran in Geneva on 19th June 2024 on the sidelines of the ongoing 56th session of the UN Human Rights Council. I also think that the international fact-finding mission on the Islamic Republic of Iran is doing a reasonable job uh, in finding what it should find and it is very good that the report um, and the 2024 20, 20, 20, report 
was actually um, adopted. And it's very good that the mandate of this mechanism was also um, now extended for, for another year, which is, which is very important. Um, I would also uh, mention briefly that um, another important issue, which is not about the UN, but it's about international um, law and jurisdiction. Um, I think the regime's recent attempt to prosecute 104 exiled members and leaders of the PMOI on fabricated terrorism charges is a blatant attempt to extend its suppression beyond Iranian borders, and it should be condemned by the international community. Now, what should we do? What is the way forward? I think we have to continue to demand thorough and impartial investigations in the um, past crimes and the ongoing crimes of the regime. It is very unfortunate that Hamid uh, Nouri was actually extradited in this infamous exchange. However, we should not forget that the um, Stockholm sentence in the second instance of the courts was actually a very, a very, very good development, thanks to uh, Mark Ellis and others who have supported this, because it showed that the uh, universal law uh, application is, is actually working. And I think the Swedish courts should be commended for that. And um, the out, of course, the, the, the text of the sentence is very enlightening. What, what else should we do? We should ensure and demand, continue to demand accountability of the regime, the crime should not go unpunished, and we should uh, extend our support for the victims and the families, and we should shine a light on ongoing abuses. Of course, we also need uh, a diplomatic process, we need pressure from the international community, including, as I've said in the beginning, things like listing the IRCG as a terrorist group. Um, and politically, the way forward can be along the lines of the famous uh, 10 points, which contain all the right substance to come to a free and democratic and secular Iran as soon as possible, and th sometimes things go faster than you would expect. Thank you very much for listening to me and all the